we can see that it maneuvers in ways that uh, rocks do not. We can see some artificial lights coming from it, or we can detect a radio signal from it. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of ways by which you, you realize something is technological. We haven't seen that yet. The American people have both the right and the responsibility to know the truth about what exists beyond our sky. For generations, that truth has been hidden in the margins, classified, redacted, misunderstood, and kept quiet by fear, retaliation, stigma, and confusion. Today, that quiet is ending. Sources close to the Department of Defense indicate that senior officials are now weighing an extraordinary option, intercepting an interstellar object before it can alter course toward Earth. They refer to it by its provisional name, 3 Atlas. At first glance, it looks like a faint, distant traveler, but the behavior recorded over the last several months suggests something else entirely. The discovery itself was unremarkable. A routine night at the Catalina Sky Survey in Arizona, late July 2025, clear air and steady tracking. Automated telescopes flagged a dim object marching against the star field. Initial labels filed it under space debris. Then the motion vectors were checked again. The object wasn't bound to the sun. Its path was hyperbolic. Velocity too high. Direction wrong. Whatever it was, it wasn't from here. We've seen interstellar visitors before. Taumuamua and Borisov, each forcing science to expand its frame just a little. But 3i Atlas immediately stood apart, as observatories across six continents and multiple space-based instruments concentrated on it. The readings became harder to reconcile with any natural category. Photometry revealed brightness fluctuations that didn't match coma-driven variability. Spectroscopy returned signatures few were prepared to accept. And the trajectory, a geometrically clean approach through the inner system, began to point with disturbing precision toward Mars. The first shock was material. Independent spectroscopic reductions reported refined nickel on the surface, metals with crystal structures and alloy compositions familiar to aerospace labs, not primordial rocks. Grain boundaries and stress patterns looked worked, not weathered. Aligned lattices that form under controlled heat and cooling, not the random quenching of space. Across all viewing angles, the returns were uniform, as if the surface had been coded or manufactured to a single specification. No patchwork, no heterogeneous crusts, no evidence of the usual space weathering one would expect after long exposure to interstellar radiation and micrometeoroid impacts. Fresh, intentional, engineered. Then came the gas. The James Webb Space Telescope detected a vast carbon dioxide envelope, roughly 350,000 kilometers in radius, surrounding the object. That's a sphere large enough to nest the Earth, moon distance inside and still have room to spare. In ordinary physics, solar wind pressure would shear such a cloud into a tail, compressing and dispersing it into the heliospheric flow. But this envelope held its shape. Temperature readings across the volume were nearly uniform, no natural gradient from hot, dense core to cool, diffuse edge. To maintain that uniformity requires an active energy source, or a containment mechanism preventing expansion losses. When the energy budget was compared against incident sunlight, the numbers missed by roughly two orders of magnitude. There isn't enough solar input to sustain what's being observed. Something else is feeding it. Navigation amplified the unease. Tracing 3i Atlas backward through space does not point to a plausible origin system within realistic travel time. It seems to emerge from interstellar emptiness. No stellar nursery, no gravitational sling narrative, no conventional ejection profile. Its forward path, however, is precise, a guided approach toward Mars that resists the subtle perturbations expected from the giant planets. There is no measurable tumbling from uneven outgassing, no stochastic wobbles, no chaotic torque histories, the spin state appears tuned, optimized for steady illumination and thermal balance, like a mechanism maintaining its own orientation in a shifting environment. Surface studies deepen the riddle. Radar and optical mapping show few of the scars that accumulate over deep time. No obvious crater fields, no spallation fans, no thermal stress cracking as perihelion heating climbs. Materials that should craze and fracture under cycling loads remain smooth and continuous. If this is natural, it is the most forgiving combination of properties ever catalogued. If it is not, 
then we may be looking at self-healing alloys or active maintenance of the outer layers, behavior that, until now, belonged to theory and fiction. And there is the tail. Comet tails breathe and twist, uneven jets, solar gusts, tangled magnetic fields. They are messy alive with turbulence. The structure trailing 3i Atlas is not messy. It is narrow, coherent, and astonishingly stable with particles moving at near-uniform velocities along parallel flow lines, as if expressed through a nozzle. When solar wind conditions shift, the formation does not flutter and fray as a coma would. Instead, it appears to compensate, preserving geometry. Flow models developed for speculative interstellar propulsion, ramjet concepts that harvest sparse hydrogen and accelerate it to generate thrust, fit the data far better than sublimation physics. If those models are even partly correct, then what we are watching is not a tail. It is exhaust. The implications are not lost on the institutions tasked with watching the sky. Publicly, agencies emphasize open investigation and scientific caution. Privately, coordination has accelerated. International space assets have been retasked. Deep space radar normally assigned to track high-orbit objects is now timesharing on 3i Atlas. Encrypted channels link civilian observatories with defense networks to monitor microvelocity changes, centimeters per second, that, if detected, would constitute definitive evidence of active maneuvering. Congressional voices have pressed for transparency. Briefings behind closed doors are reportedly blending planetary defense language with language normally associated with unidentified aerial phenomena. The posture has shifted from curiosity to contingency. What happens if we cannot stop it? What if there is nothing to stop, only something to meet? Interception in this context does not mean engagement. It means approach under protocol. Sensor suites at standoff ranges, spectrum sweeps for emissions, passive listening before active ping. It means answering the simplest of questions first. Is the object responding to its environment or is it responding to us? Skeptics insist on restraint and they are right to do so. Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary caution. There are natural mechanisms we do not fully understand. Cometary behavior has surprised us before. Spectral interpretations can be confounded by unknown dust chemistries, by geometry, by instrument bias. But the stack of anomalies here, industrial alloys where none should exist, a maintained CO2 envelope beyond solar energy limits, inertial stability under outgassing, a coherent, nozzle-like plume, a statistically implausible approach vector that remains steady under gravitational crosswinds, presses the boundaries of coincidence beyond comfort. If 3i Atlas is natural, it will rewrite textbooks on comet physics, material science, and interstellar dynamics. If it is artificial, then we are living through the first empirical evidence that intelligence has crossed the dark between stars and placed something engineered within the reach of our telescopes. Either outcome is history. There is a date that keeps appearing in internal schedules, in telescope time allocations, and in the cautious phrasing of public updates. October 3, 2025. On that day, barring any change in course, 3i Atlas will present geometry that offers the clearest view we are likely to have before Mars. What we record then may settle debates that have simmered for months, or open questions we are not yet equipped to ask. Until that moment we are left with this, an object from elsewhere wearing the signature of industry rather than geology, a cloud that behaves like it is contained, a tail that behaves like thrust, a trajectory that behaves like intention. We do not know what it is. We do know what it is not, and in the space between those truths a civilization waits, watching a silent point of light cross the void and wondering whether it is arriving or returning. Whatever the answer, the public deserves clarity. The skis above a free people are not a secret to be owned. They are a frontier to be understood. If 3i Atlas is a natural wonder, we will learn from it. If it is something more, we will prepare for it, with patience, with science, and with the steadiness that comes from facing the unknown together. October 3rd may mark nothing more than a beautiful passage of light and dust, or it may become the day we finally admit what many have suspected for a very long time, that we are part of a larger story, and that story has just turned a page.